Welcome to the DD Post for All Season Sports Show. I'm Drew Rubenstein here with Dave Racy on New Year's Eve. Dave, and in, in, in the newspaper, we uh, uh, recapped the, the year that was in news and sports the last couple days. And uh, a lot of sports stories, some good, some bad for 2013. But uh, let's start off, in, in your opinion, what was the most significant uh, sports story of 2013? Well, and I consider significant, you know, you almost have to go with the West Virginia football uh, season. It didn't go well, and therefore there were some consequences, loss of a bowl and some things like that. So that's a, a significant outcome when, uh, you know, our football team in the past couple, 10 years or so has always done well, and, you know, and some seasons have been, they have been outstanding. And this year was definitely a, a step backwards. So I'd have to think that would be a very significant one since it's the major athletic program in the state, really. Mm -hmm. And no, no, no bowl to enjoy for the first time in a long time, and, and the four and eight season has been dissected. But maybe to, to kind of lift people's spirits up on, on New Year's Eve, let's look at the most exciting sports story of 2013. Well, yeah, uh, we all felt it was locally Jed Jerko uh, making it with the San Diego Padres, starting second baseman, uh, you know, outside of a hamstring injury. He had a great year, almost 20 home runs or about that. And, yeah, over uh, 20. A lot of people went up to Pittsburgh when the Padres came in to see him play, and there was, was a lot of excitement in this town, one of our, on our own, you know, who made it the big time. And and you were there for one of his games in Pittsburgh. Uh, see some fans there and and I, I think it's still I think it was it was interesting and a lot of people just enjoyed it and it was an odd situation just being able to go up to a game and identify hey that's that's the hometown yeah. guy and somebody to kind of follow throughout the course of the year you don't get an opportunity to do that very yeah. much in towns like this and uh, so that's a and baseball's a, a long way to get there too there are a lot of guys trying out yeah, absolutely. Um, you, you hit on football and, and men's basketball was also a little bit down. Uh, what sorts of things do you think we've learned as, as maybe just a, a fan base uh, uh, from the, the 2013 sports season? Well, I guess maybe not to be spoiled of one thing. Uh, I think maybe we were taking some of these seasons to be granted. I mean, you know, truthfully, we fired a coach in football who had won nine games and you know, had a great winning percentage but we were told that nine games wasn't good enough so you know if I think that's one thing is that maybe we've been spoiled and coach Huggins of course had a you know great record he came in and had a great run of the final four and I think everybody expected us just to remain there and uh, you know we obviously last year's losing record you know we haven't remained there so I think we need to you know appreciate the good seasons a little bit more than and you know not expect them as often mm -hmm. as we should. And I think a byproduct off of that is is how about attendances at games. I mean going into the Big 12 there was a lot of discussion about fans not being excited about the Big East brand of football and bringing in these these uh, traditional powerhouses from the Big 12 was going to help boost attendances and yet Texas and Oklahoma make their first trips to Mountaineer Field and neither one was a sellout. Attendances has actually dipped over the last year and a half and I think uh, would you agree I mean it just shows ultimately fans want to see winning products versus uh, great opposing teams. Well, I think that's part of it, and I, I think the fans would show up, but I still think there's some hard feelings about the change and, uh, you know, and the way it was done. And uh, you know, Bill Stewart is a tough act to follow uh, personally. You know, he was, mm -hmm. he was such a great guy, and everybody loved him. And so, you know, when you bring a coach in like Coach Holgerson, who's more, you know, thinking about the actual game and the X and O's, you know. He's not quite as public and things like that. So I think that's, you know, partly been some of the problem. I think that there are still some fans who are a little bit bitter maybe. And, of course, when you don't get the wins, then mm -hmm. that definitely adds up. Mm -hmm. Look, looking at some of the other top stories, I mean, the rifle team winning another national championship comes to mind. Women's soccer team, uh, the the one program that hasn't really had a, a Big 12 transition to kind of overcome, it's 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 done well and won the Big 12 championship regular season and conference title. Local track teams and cross country teams piled up a, a number of state championships. Um, other things that that pop into your mind as well. Well, the you know the two high school mm -hmm. uh, Morgantown University high school football teams of did well, mm -hmm. uh, you know, university is the one that stopped Morgantown from going out. So, yeah. 
it's too bad they got matched up in the playoffs. Yeah. Chazzy Thomas, of course, right. being the player of the year in, in high school, which I think was well deserved. Uh, Morgantown High's basketball team with uh, Nathan, Nathan Adrian. Adrian. You know, and he goes to play at WVU. First time we've had that in a long, long, long time. So that was very positive, I thought. Absolutely. And uh, now, now that it's been two complete years in the Big 12 season, at least for the fall programs, and we're closing at the end, can we finally say the Big 12 transition is over? Oh, yeah, I think so. I, I really do. I, I don't know how much of a transition you go from one conference other than the traveling and stuff, which... But you have to travel. All the players in, all, in football and basketball are good all over the country, though I have to admit the ones in the Big 12 in football are probably better than mm -hmm. the ones in the um, former Big East. But nevertheless, you know, not all of the teams are that great. And uh, so I think that should be, you know, settled in and we should know what we're doing in, in the conference and who we're up against. All right, very good. Dave, appreciate your time once again, and hope everybody has a happy new year. Thanks for tuning in to thedpost.com. Please continue to watch for the latest on the Mountaineers. Thanks for watching.